Hi, this is Gavin with Haverstick Designs, and this is The Sound Project. This is the first time we've had special guests in our office. Yes. Which is Happy to wild. Be here. This is uh, Joao and Josh from Focal. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for uh, making your way up here. And, and uh, we uh, obviously with Focal, we have a ton of studios that we've done with with your speakers involved with it, and we go have a long history. We go back a long way. Um, tell me though a little bit about each of you guys, and you guys take turns. I don't know if you paper rock scissors for who goes first, but Josh, let's do that. Go first. Oh, you're just gonna go. <laughs> no, we're not gonna. You, know, okay. <laughs> you, you want to do it? Okay. Yeah. Um, what, do you, what do you want to know specifically? Like, just, just like your background. Like, how did you yeah. end up where you're at? Probably like most people um, started as a kid playing guitar. Like, watch Back to the Future. Saw the Johnny B. Good scene. Was like, that looks cool. I want to do that. Yeah. So play guitar forever. And then uh, when I was like 16, I went to a studio with my like little band. Like every kid does. You save all your money or whatever. We're going to go record two songs or whatever it is. And then it was like obsessed. I walked in and was like, I don't care about playing guitar at all. I just mm-hmm. want to understand what's going on here. So then I got like the guy who owned the studio let me putz around the studio a little bit. And then uh, went to school and just that was early on when like I was using Audacity, yeah. <laughs> you know, like Audacity and a, a, like a little Lexicon Omega thing. And then, um, you know, started rec- recording bands in college, uh, record my band and record a bunch of other bands like everybody else. And at the same time, was like interning at studios um, and working freelance in the, in the summer, and then got out of school and tried to do that full time for a little Where bit. Where were you living at the time? Uh, I was living kind of Decatur, Illinois. I went to school at Milliken mm-hmm. um, in Decatur, Illinois. So another Midwestern guy. Yeah. Um, but I lived uh, in like around Champaign, Illinois. Yeah. So lots of great people: Jonathan Pines, Mark Rubel, like really cool scene that I think I was too young to even understand <laughs> what I was, you know, sort of in at the time. Um, and, uh, yeah, ended up going in turning a studio that, uh, the dude from the band hum owned, Oh yeah. um, and just freelance. And he let me kind of run, you know, do what I wanted, record bands when he wasn't around, whatever, and just learned a lot and, and got out and tried to do that a little while and ended up going, working for a retailer, worked at Sweetwater uh, mm-hmm. for like seven years, which is where I met you. Yeah. Um, and kind of figured out like, Oh, I'm pretty good at. You know, like I like making records, and I still did that to a certain extent. I still made a bunch of, of did a bunch of projects and whatever, but found out like, oh, I'm actually pretty good at this building studio thing, mm-hmm. um, and built studios and met a bunch of people who, you know, were kind of like heroes of mine, if you will, at the time, mm-hmm. um, including yourself. And right. uh, <laughs> da, 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 da. Um, and uh, you know, uh, I had a kind of after a long career there, I had sort of a family extenuating circumstance where I had to relocate. And I actually ended up going to work for AA Ribbon Mike. So I worked mm-hmm. on the other side of the transducer um, and worked for AA for a little while and uh, then got an offer from Focal. So um, five years later, I'm still at Has it only Focal. been five years that you've been at Focal? Yeah, it feels a lot. It feels like, it feels yeah, like at least eight, eight to ten. Wow. I'm, oh. I look that old. <laughs> <laughs> not not good, the way man. that you're lit today. Oh. Uh, you know, it's perfect lighting because Luke at more than media what they does, did with the does his job well. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Nice. So, yeah. um, it's in an eggshell. I know. Nutshell. We, eggshell. eggshell. <laughs> yeah. That's it in an eggshell, everyone. That's it. That's this it. This guy's brilliant. <laughs> so, yeah, we had met when you were at Sweetwater. Mm-hmm. And do you remember the three hour acoustics course that I, I gave you? I do. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think they just do that course there to like weed out the people. Like, if you can sit through this, you can do anything. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, you know, I think I was in a different headspace at the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, but there's some of those classes uh, when kind of, when you're brought in, they you know put you like full time for I think 14 weeks, maybe it's 13 weeks, mm-hmm. going over like all these all these somewhat technical topics, um, especially on the recording side. And I remember your class was pretty intense, which I, I'm always into like the nerdy. I've built a bunch of gear, mm-hmm. like I'm into the science part. Um, and then there was a digital audio class that was particularly <laughs> gnarly, where we talked about like dither and oh, you know fun. aliasing and all this crazy stuff. Okay, so yeah, but it was it was good. Yeah, nice. And if it, if it were, I wouldn't. I'd be on a different podcast. With that's them. true. Yeah. That's true. So yeah. Joel, tell. Oh, just kidding. You wouldn't be on a different I would, podcast. I, I, Only I'd this one. Definitely be here. Yeah. yeah. So Joel, tell me a little bit about uh, your history. So as you probably see from my name, I'm not an American person. <laughs> uh, so I'm I'm from Portugal, uh, born and raised in the capital, Lisbon. Um, 
my whole thing with audio started as you know I always had a uh, an interest for for music and um, you know when I was a kid probably like 12 13 I started making beats in, in FL studio because um, I was always interested in hip-hop and things like that um, and throughout that whole process of just music creation I got interested in the whole recording part of it the mixing got got along with uh, with some people and and got involved in some some local projects and that's how I went to pursue uh, uh, study in music technologies uh, then the the last part of the course was really focused on sound isolation in room acoustics and um, so I got really into that part um, I still pursued a, a small like special specialization course in, in building acoustics um, and in the end I finally found a job at, uh, at a, a Portuguese manufacturer of acoustic panels which is Vicoustic well here in the U.S., we we usually say vicoustic. I, I wasn't um, sure about that because I always say vicoustic, but is it? Yeah, it, it's a Portuguese thing. So sometimes us Portuguese people will name a business like uh, with with an English tone to it, but then we pronounce it as Portuguese Got it. Uh, people. So we say vicoustic uh, mm -hmm. in Portugal, but uh, most people who speak English will say vicoustic. Got it. Um, so I worked there uh, for five years as an acoustic consultant. I got involved in, you know, basically Vicoustic has a projects department aside from the just panel manufacturing. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it was interesting five years. We, we touch all types of rooms from uh, just the typical personal listening room to recording studios to like multi-purpose arenas. So that that was the whole project part. But then because they also have uh, research and development facilities, I also had to go a little bit into the acoustic measurements of like sound absorption, mm -hmm. sound isolation. So that was uh, that was fun to be on the technical side of things. Uh, and then recently, about a year and a half ago, I joined I joined Focal across the ocean and landed here in well, I'm actually living in Montreal, Canada, but yeah. here in the US as well, uh, really focused on the North American market. So here that's, I am. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, because we worked together on a few things over the past mm -hmm. when, when you were at Vicoustic. And, and uh, with with your role at, at Focal now and having so much of history in, in building acoustics, um, are you thinking about that all the time with the, with the rooms that these your speakers are going into? Yeah, I mean it's a uh, it's a it's a big part of it, and and usually when when I join the company, um, I'm still very related to what Vicoustic does because we distribute Vicoustic here in in North America. Mm -hmm. uh, but then every time now that I'm supporting more Josh on the pro audio side and in, in North America in general, every time we get involved in in something or. You know, we we have to interact with customers and and whatnot. It's there's always the relation between you know the room you're putting your speakers into. So we you know we have some interesting conversations and mm -hmm. you know all 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 it all ties in together. So it's yeah it's pretty it's pretty interesting and you know just me me and Josh going back and forth between you know acoustics and and um, and speakers in general. It's 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 super interesting to be now connected to that part as well that's awesome the uh how much travel are you guys doing uh it depends uh sometimes a lot mm -hmm. um you know i think a couple months ago i was home like four days the whole month wow uh you know but on average it's probably like a week and a half a month okay um, yeah he, tr he travels quite more than than i yeah. do mm -hmm. um i've been traveling a bit more to to meet him for uh pro audio related stuff but uh but yeah i mean me being at hq in uh well not at hq in france <laughs> yeah. Focal, but being at the office in 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 canada i travel mostly like for some shows and now i've been traveling more to support him mm -hmm. and uh you know just meeting you guys here <laughs> yeah so the uh travel is it a mixture of like shows and and sales type of activities and then sometimes and you're always going to studios as well i know yeah yeah, it's it's a mix of a lot of things, you know, and it's and it's, you know, there's there's when you work at any pro audio company, there's the dealer component, like, you know, 
most things are sold through dealers because pe people like us, we don't have huge tech support departments. We don't have a bunch of customer service folks who can help you get your box ASAP. In, in fact, like we really, we can ship things overnight, but like usually it takes two or three days for stuff to get out of our door. Right. So, go, you know, having dealers is really important. We, we support those guys and, and, and gals and, you know, uh, all that. But that's part of it. But there's also, you know, relationship side of it, you know, trying to get into a room or work with, you know, any of the clients, you're, you know, you're, you're, we'll probably talk about like it's, you know, understand what they're doing, how we can help demos, mm -hmm. you know, just just building bridges yeah. you know, if you can. And it's, it's just try to maximize efficiency as much as we can. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I go to L.A. to visit, you know, a couple of dealers, I'll probably also stop by a handful of studios. I'll probably have yeah. coffee with it's probably similar to what you do, right? Yeah. Sometimes you're on site doing visits because right. you're doing business, but sometimes you're in the same city and you're like, oh, well, I may as well go visit this yeah, person we, or that person. If we have one project in LA, I know I'm going to be there at least four or five days because I there's so many things I could I could do while I'm and there. And that's a slippery slope. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it it's could like, be two weeks, honestly. Yeah, yeah it's like, oh, I, I really need to go do this thing in LA. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> well, may as well book a week, you know. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. how it goes. Yeah. But you're in Nashville, right? Like, yeah. So, so yeah. Um, that's probably convenient. You, there's yeah. just studios on every block. <laughs> yeah, literally. Like, um, I moved there four years ago um, now. And part of that was, A, just because the warm weather is awesome. Um, humidity sometimes, not so much. Mm -hmm. But the warm weather weather's great. And I was already traveling there, like, you know, sometimes a week, a week out of the month. Right. So I was like, okay, well, moved down there. Um, and it's been, it's awesome. It's yeah. like... It's also like terrifying <laughs> because everybody's so good. Like, right. you know, you have like, I don't even pick up guitar and that's like, you go walk into a guitar store and I'm like, this one feels nice. Yeah. You know, I you feel embarrassed. maybe a little, a couple, a couple chords. And then I'm like, yeah, you know, and then it's, you've got this 12 year old just shredding next to me, you know, just doing all of his, you know, playing full Chet Atkins catalog, you know, I, I feel like thing. too in Nashville, there's there's a lot of people that have uh, really strong opinions, obviously, of of, yeah. of uh, audio. And uh, do you find that with with Focal? Or I think that's the case with most people is that there some people are just really loyal to certain brands and they mm. don't like others. But do you, do you see any like pockets of of people that prefer Focal over others? Or yeah, I mean, I, th I think there's I think there's tendencies, and I, I think it's maybe a genre specific tendency. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't I don't know that any of that's intentional. Like. Um, I think people use, in a lot of cases, what they're, they aspire to, like who their favorite engineers use, or yeah. maybe they've used something that, in a studio that they've worked in and they like that experience or mm -hmm. whatever the case is. And, you know, and people move, it, you know, the more community centric it is, you know, the easier the, tr the translation goes from room to room. So, yeah. you know, that, that's a thing for sure. You know, um, people love 1073s. Why, you know, why? Because at one point in time, you know, in the UK, there was 1073s in a reasonable amount of places. And sure enough, engineers were going through and they started using 1073s. Everybody's like, this is great. Yeah. And now there's 1073s across the planet everywhere. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, and, and uh, Focal certainly benefited from a lot of that. You know, uh, there's other other companies that make great speakers who do do as well. Yeah. Um, but I don't, I don't get the feeling that there's like, you know, little like gear cults or anything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, honestly, like Nashville, a it's a really cool town. Everybody's super laid back. Everybody's also like super supportive of each other, yeah. which is cool. It's like, oh, I'm booked. I can't do that. But you should call this guy. Right. You know, there's not like this. You know. There's enough to go around. The, for yeah, it feels now. like there's enough to go around. And, and um, you know, everybody's supportive, which is really cool. And that's the thing. Like when we get asked all the time when we, so we don't specify gear and speakers mm -hmm. and things. We try to stay uh, um, neutral on that. And, and it's uh, because for one, especially when it comes to the speakers, they ask us, like, which speakers do you recommend? And I'll throw out some of my favorites, but I said you really should go listen to them in a room. Like it, before you make any choice, like you should really go hear them. And that's a tough thing too, because depending on which room you go hear them in, that's going Changes to impact well. the way you, what you think about them. That's the hardest thing. <clears throat> that is that is hands down the hardest thing, you know. And and I and I would say, like I tell people all the time that you know I, I see folks buy these really big speakers in these environments that aren't capable of handling. Mm -hmm. Not just output, but low frequency extension, uh, yeah. the the intended listening distance of the speaker. Like, th there's all these variables, and and it happens, and and it's like acoustics. Whether you, this, maybe this is a big big business card for Gavin, but <laughs> <laughs> and Haversick Designs, but like the room is your in your monitoring system. Period. Yeah. And you know, and 
there's a lot there's a lot of people trying to fix it quickly with EQ or with AutoCal or whatever. And there's some really great solutions that, that help that. But there's like there's still air between the transducers and your ears. Right. So whatever that however that sound is traveling through that environment, like you have to account for that. And you know, there's lots of great showrooms. There's lots of places you can go to listen to speakers in, in pretty decent environments. But it's never going to be your room. Right. Ever. Um, That's not the easy part of sell selling speakers, right? Because, hard. Yeah. you know, you, you you will listen to it. And, and I'll see, I mean, as a customer, if you go to these, you know, sometimes showrooms and try to get a, a, a feel for what the speakers are, and then, you know, you will put them in your room and it will sound different. But at the same time, it's so tough to, to, to tell a customer, hey, you want to try like two or three different brands and pairs of speakers yeah we'll we'll go there and we'll swap them yeah. all out and even just the transition period of switching from one speaker to the other it just is it's so physically difficult yeah so well, yeah think, it's yeah. it's a i think the audible self. memory of the average person is like what seven seconds. seven seconds yeah yeah right <laughs> so like you're trying to switch a speaker you know and do i've seen one place that has like an automated like wheel oh wow <laughs> that That's spins crazy the speakers so they're in the exact same acoustic position yeah. at least the acoustic center of the speakers in the same position and it's like on a on a rotating wheel and it just goes zoop, and it's that's amazing yeah can i go I mean, you don't have to say who it is but yeah, I can, yeah can i go yeah, see yeah, that yeah, somewhere yeah yeah it's pretty it's pretty cool but that's the only time i've ever been in a position where i was like okay this is yeah you just this stay is in the same spot and but it's but it's still pretty it still takes a minute because you can't just like mm -hmm. there's yeah. inertia, inertia right so sure. or there'd be speakers everywhere <laughs> um But yeah, it's it's really important and it's really hard, you know. Yeah. So it's it's we all have our work cut out for us for sure. Now, do you have studios uh, maybe in Nashville or other places of the country where um, you have access to bring clients in to to listen? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think uh, lots of folks we work with, we try to build relationships with, and, and many of them, I can say, hey, we've got a client here, there, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have time available? Um, and, and you know, sometimes they'll give us the time if they're not booked or whatever. Sometimes. They're super booked and they need, or, you know, or maybe their studio is struggling a little bit and they need to make some money because times are hard. Every studio is, sure. who opens a studio in this day and age? All of your clients, but <laughs> it's a, it's a tough thing to justify, right? For sure. Uh, but yeah, in, in most cases, if you have, uh, if there's somebody out there who wants to try some speakers and you're in a semi populated area, we can find a way to. Them. Do that. We get that question all the time of like, hey, can we go check out a studio that you've done? And we, we do commercial spaces that, that we that we can uh, facilitate that. But a lot of the, the ones are in people's homes. And it's just it's tough to connect people yeah. when you're bringing a stranger into your house to be able to, to hear yeah. a room. But uh, yeah. But yeah, it's it's something where <clears throat> I mean, in our experience with with uh, you know working with you guys on, on so many projects, I was putting together this this PowerPoint presentation just to kind of And I was reminded at one point it felt like 80% of the rooms we were doing had focal speakers nice. in it. You know, that's like, good to know. Yeah, it's 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 wild. Thank I mean, you, Gavin. It's yeah, thank definitely you. something that that people uh, gravitate towards. And I, I was going to show a few of them um, here on the on the screen. Um, the first one here is the one we did with Crowder, and yeah, which we is were, incredible. Thank you. I mean, it's it's one of my favorite rooms that we've done, if not my favorite. Like it's it's a uh, it was such a And we have like a full YouTube video of it that yeah. people can go and, and, and check out. But uh, um, for one, Crowder's just an amazing person, great to work with. I also got to do it with my friend uh, Biz Morris, who um, is actually going to record a podcast here fairly soon with us as well. He's all right. He's all right. He's yeah. a good dude. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and that one, it's like he didn't have any isolation issues. Like he just wanted the room to sound great, uh, which is... I, I like doing the isolation details, but it also yeah. is a big relief when people say it's not critical, you yeah. know, because it, you it's know a lot that. of responsibility, right? Yeah, yeah, because like we have some cases where people have their like their their kid's bedroom is directly above their studio, and they only work late at night. Yeah, and so it's like really critical to yeah. make it make it work. But for Crowder, it was, it was just tuning the room and making it sound great. And um, he he started; he already had a, a set of Focal speakers, the the Trio 11s, um, and. I love how like this picture here that we're showing on screen right now is is uh, one of the first final shots that we took of the space, and I remember sending it to you, and you saw it, and you're like, man, 
he should really get those wrapped in like a, a white, uh, you yeah. know, because everything in the room is white. Like if I go to some of these other other uh, photos of the room, it's 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 all white, everything pretty much, except that couch uh, and the artwork. Um, but yeah, with those speakers, <clears throat> it's something where uh, um, it would really set the room off. You know, like yeah. like the the dude says, the rug really tied the room together. Like <laughs> it, it, the the speakers uh, yeah. being white would be would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. They, so yeah. you came through on that, and we got. Got yeah. them custom painted. Yeah, we got them custom painted. So it was on the cover of Mix Magazine awesome. uh, with the white speakers there. You came over. Um, hand delivered. Hand delivered. That's the kind yeah. of service that Josh offers at Focal. Well, let me be clear. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't happen all the time. If you have a really awesome space, you know, uh, let, let's have a conversation. You know, it, it's uh, that was one that was like, okay, this this is really cool. This makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, but you know, I was like super cautious. I was like, "This is this is it." This took it took a long time yeah. to get them done because um, it was a total custom custom thing. And uh, you know, I didn't. I got them, and I was like inspecting them. I was like, "Okay," and I was gonna reship them. And I was like, "No, I'm just. It's not even worth the risk. Yeah. I'm just gonna the, the FedEx guys in Nashville. <laughs> I'm not not throwing anybody under the bus here, but." I literally had a package they on my roof. They throw packages yeah. under the bus. Yeah. No, they, threw, they literally threw a package on my roof not, not too long ago. Wow. And then the, the guy rings my doorbell and he goes, oh, sir, like, I'm so sorry, but like I have the package. I missed the target. It's, it's like, it's, a, it's like, what? And I'm like, what? I've got this all on my ring camera. It's incredible. That's amazing. And I was like, what? He goes, it's, I, I threw it too high. I was like, what? You threw and it? I, I went out in my front yard and I look up and there's like a package on my roof. He goes, oh, I'm so sorry. I was like, oh, I'll get ladders. How's that even happen? Late release, I guess. I guess. Uh, I don't yes. know. It doesn't, doesn't play yeah. disc golf. Yeah, so I didn't want speakers <laughs> yeah, on the roof. So so we brought them down, and, and uh, I swapped the, all the yeah. drivers and the amps and stuff. And and it's, uh, as you as you can see, it's awesome. It's amazing. And it sounds, it sounds great. But I, think my fa- I think my favorite part about it, aside from just the flexibility, is, like, it's really comfortable. Mm-hmm. Like, sometimes you see studios like that, and they're, like, so perfect, you don't want to, like, touch them. Right. That doesn't have that vibe at all. And then everything in the whole rig is like immediately accessible and right. live like all the yeah. time. That was what was great uh, yeah. having Biz involved with that because he, he worked through all the details and, you know, we handled the acoustics and we're busy doing that. And if, you know, I'm always like, man, if we have to focus on uh, the integration and gear selection, we're not going to be as good at what we do. You know, we always let people yeah. be great at what they do. And, and yeah, he hooked it up to where, I mean, like that synth wall is completely live at all times. There's that... Um, you know, guitar pedal drawer, drawer that pops yeah. out of his desk, and then he's got an amp room down the hall that has seven amps he can just control from his phone. Mm-hmm. It's just like it's seamless it, you know. experience to get everything connected. And honestly, like the yeah. video that we have, uh, which we'll link in the description, but um, people watch that all the time and they contact us and say, "Yeah, I want that. I want the always on studio." Like because mm. it, it is a thing where. Um, I actually don't have a home studio right now. It's my daughter's bedroom. She took it over. But um, when I did have the studio, it was always like, man, I really want to record something, but yeah, have to plug all these things uh, I gotta, together. Yeah, uh, to get there, it took so long. Like I just was like, the the moment's over, you yeah. know. And so like having that, it's it's pretty amazing. Well, and to and to get really meta on all of this really quick, like that's I think that's all of our goal, right? Yeah. Like all of our goal is to like to get the gear. And all the whatever's going on in the acoustic environment out of the way, yeah. so you can focus on the music, and right. that's it. Like, now worry about patching in cables or making sure that you know X, Y, or Z or your speaker positioning is perfect or finding this patch cable. Or oh wait, my patch bay is not normal or half normal or whatever. <laughs> right. I gotta go change that. Like that's just that's just time and it's, it's frustrating, yeah. especially if you're a person who who doesn't do it for a living all day, all the time. Right. Right. Like if you're somebody who this is your a really serious hobby or whatever the case is, like you have a finite amount of time to do what you want to do. So yeah. to be efficient. Yeah. I mean, how yeah. you know, how much time do people, I know that when I was making records for, you know, for a long time, like how many mix, how much time did I spend going in and out of my car trying to figure out like, okay, is this right or wrong? It was my car even right. Probably not. My Mazda B 3000 pickup truck <laughs> did not sound very good, but, but you know, it's like, that's time. And if you have that reassurance from, your room or yeah. your, your playback system, or whatever the case is, it's like, okay, now I can focus on what's important. Yeah. And, and that's it. Yeah. So that was a picture of us in the room, uh, you and, and me and Biz and Crowder. Uh, he was so happy that day, honestly. Like, because 
He, That's the first time I met him. He's such he's such a nice guy. He is, and and it was one of the things where Biz and I were forever trying to keep it a secret from him because you were in the background making it happen, and a couple of times he was almost like, uh, all right, well I'm just gonna go have him wrapped somewhere, you know, and um and we just had to keep it a secret. But then finally he was really gonna take them, and we're like, hold off on that. And he's like, why, you know? And so he he's like, a, I think he said even he's like a, a kid on Christmas when when those got delivered. So um, yeah, pretty pretty special day. Um, yeah, the room just turned out amazing, um, and those white speakers do make a difference. Like you yeah. see those in the room, it's yeah, it's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, next one here uh, that we did with uh, TJ from from Neat. Mm-hmm. Um, this is uh, Tyler Joseph Studio uh, uh, lead singer, Twenty One Pilots, and he's got the SM nines in there. And uh, um, he actually loves the SM nine so much. We also have uh, ATC uh, one ten soffit mounted in his basement studio there, um, back of the room. Kind of looks like this. It's a really nice space. It's where he wrote the last two albums is out of this space. And uh, but he loved the SM9 so much that when we did another room for him, he was down in the basement for so long. He's like, man, I, I the next one I just want to write with some natural light. Like yeah. I, I need some windows. Um, so we got a, a, another space for him, which is a sunroom. And he took the SM9s from his basement and took mm-hmm. the, took them in here. So that's his main writing room for the, for the next thing. Yeah, I remember TJ giving me a call like, hey, he's building a new studio, and I was like, oh, cool. He's like, yeah, he's got to get out of the basement, and he wants he wants like a lot of natural light. And I was like, oh, and he's like, here's the space he's dealing with. And he texts me like at the room empty. Yeah. And I was like, it's a whole wall of windows. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah. talk about a talk about a shift. And, and you know, it's, you made it look like, it's really cool. I, how, how is that like a challenge to interview you for a second? How, like <laughs> yeah, like yeah. having yeah. that much glass and that, that much reflective <clears throat> surface in a space like that, how, how much of a challenge is well, that? Well, it is uh, quite a bit of a challenge. I mean, for two reasons. One, um, you know, this is, semi close to neighbors and so isolation was a potential issue because it wasn't something that he really wanted um you know to just he didn't want to disturb anybody or really people know that there's a studio there um and but we decided after i went there and did some testing and and we decided that like the expense it would have taken to try to isolate that Mm -hmm. room properly it just wasn't wasn't in the cards yeah there's a lot lot to do there so we ended up not doing isolation we put a plan together just in case he wants to do it down the road but um really the goal was to get a really great writing room like so he's not doing a lot of mixing in here i mean he'll reference in there but it was mostly for tracking so that that made it easier on us because if if he was doing final mixing in there then we'd mm-hmm. be you yeah. know in trouble and we, we we talked to him about potentially putting up curtains but then that also defeats the purpose of the him wanting light. to get out, yeah, of the, yeah. out of the basement yeah. you know so um you know we have acoustical panels in in between the windows and we used all like mostly white panels so that it kind of blends in and it's really um you know open and airy um we have some of the flex 48s on the back wall from acoustical fulfillment uh, that was to help with some front to back axial modes because when the shields are in it helps to absorb that kind of 80 to 100 hertz range um, there's some custom diffusers on the ceiling in, in black there in the back and then we have uh, some ceiling clouds that were custom built by the mm-hmm. by the contractor and it it's one of those things where, yeah, it's it's way way more livelier than his basement studio, mm-hmm. but for what he was going to use it for, it was okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's he's working in there currently, and um, you know he's got a couple. You see in one of these photos here, he's got a couple of the uh, the Orlex uh, Pro Maxes on stands. Mm-hmm. So if he wants to cut a vocal, he Gobo can, stuff he off, can yeah. gobble yeah. things off and, yeah. and get a little little drier sound. So um, yeah, it's working really well for him, and, and seems to be very happy with it. And and yeah, he, he just loves the SM9s. He's so used to them now. He, yeah. He wrote two full albums on them, and now he's writing the third. So, and that and that's really part of it too. Is it, you know, it's like experience. You know, uh, with anything, with a microphone, with your own voice, with your guitar, with your speakers. You know, it's like once you get to know something, it's right. it's also just part of you. Yeah, you it's know? tough to change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they're also great speakers. Don't sell yourself. Yeah, short. I mean, they're, yeah, they're great. <laughs> they're great. Um, you know, it's it's. Uh, we're we're very proud of them for sure. I mean, the one the biggest challenge I think with his SM nines were actually the fact that he couldn't set his pokeball on top of it because of the woofer. The radiator. There. Yeah. You know, maybe we should consider building like a custom uh, floating shelf above Stuff the holder. radiator, <laughs> so you could have pokeballs. You could have things. That's, yeah. Maybe give a call to France and, and just see like see what you can. I feel like we could probably three D print something like that, like yeah. anti vibration support. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it could happen. 
Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll let him know. Um, then you can develop some tunable acoustic treatment Pokeball. There we go. Yeah, what is the resonance of a Pokeball? Uh, it depends. Is, um, it, is it a great ball or is it an ultra <laughs> ball? Is it, is it, is it uh, filled with ball, something? Of oh, okay. Well, that's like, I think it's 373 hertz. 373 hertz. Yeah. How's that l- l- wavelength fit inside of? It's too technical. I've got to get Let's my not... acousta tape yeah. and see how long that wavelength <laughs> yeah. is. Yeah. You still have one of those? Yeah, yeah. I've got it in my bag here, actually. The acousta tape. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, all right. So next one we're going to talk about is uh, another one we did with Biz Morris, which is Tori Kelly's studio. Yeah. Um, and this one was done... Uh, man, it's been quite a while ago, uh, like 2017 and 2018, something like that. And uh, she wanted a space in her house where she could uh, write and record music. And, and um, you know, timing of it, too, when by the time it got finished, it was kind of, you know, somewhat right before COVID, COVID started. Yeah. And I, I, I can't count how many like late night talk shows she live streamed from this room when it was finished mm-hmm. and have a space like that at home was really awesome but yeah she i love her setup because it's really simple but it's yeah. everything is quality you know that, i mean that and that's it too and, and you know the more like the more the world moves in a in a digital way and it's and it, you know obviously we everybody loves gear i've a ton of gear right but like more and more systems at least that i'm seeing you know there's more and more systems like this and it's like you can get everything you need to get done right there yeah you know for the most part you have what maybe you not need to be drums, creative but. and that's it yeah yeah so, yeah. so a question for you, Gavin, is I see, I see that this room is quite narrow. Yes. Um, and now, now I guess I'm interviewing you yeah. too as well. <laughs> okay. Like, how did you deal with like low frequency issues? Because when, when I see rooms like this more on the, you know, it's just, just a personal room for someone to make music or mm-hmm. listen to music, I feel that and especially working for a manufacturer before is like there there's always the clients expectations to manage and some clients will come to you and say oh yeah i want the my room to have the perfect acoustics yeah and and you're looking at it and you're like yeah there's there's limitations to this especially on the low end how do you deal with that yeah and and for me like my mindset on that is there's always limitations like unless you're building in a warehouse where you have you know 30 foot ceilings and you can do whatever you want Mm -hmm. um you're going to be working around things and and Hers as well was one where she did not care about isolation either. So we weren't doing all the isolation details. But honestly, I mean, this is her first house, her and her husband, Andre, like they, they purchased this house and they wanted, she just wanted a retreat, like a place that she could go and be creative. And that's a big thing with our rooms is that we always just want them to be inspiring and creative and just yeah. somewhere that you want to stay forever. Because yeah, really important. Yeah. And, and mm-hmm. so for hers, uh, again, mixing wasn't uh, number one priority. It was more uh, performance and, and uh, writing and, and, and just getting ideas down. But I mean, she's done a lot of like, work that's shown up on albums in the space and um as far as the, i mean the room is pretty narrow uh there, there's also challenges i don't have a photo in this slide uh, set but uh, the, the back of it uh is is closet doors like mm-hmm. there's just closet doors all along the back side and then uh, the entrance door into the studio so the back corners we could do nothing with and and even we had developed some hanging panels that we're, we were going to have that she could put in front of the closet but it just became again it's it's more like function uh you know in logistics of the space she's like i don't think that i'll hang those panels Every and then remove them and ta- you know yeah. she just wanted something that would would be pretty good so these speakers actually fire back towards a closet area and mm-hmm. like, yeah, you could open the closet and get some absorption from, from that. What's what's inside of it. But, um, f- for the most part, I mean, w- with the, the focal speakers in there, and then we also have a trend uh, in, in there that we are able to do some correction. We have four inch thick panels on the side walls and then uh, four inch thick base traps in the corner with an airspace behind it. And then all of the panels are, they're two, three, and four inches thick, the hexagon panels. And some of them have a, a perforated facing underneath the, the fabric. So they're they're about 80% more absorptive in the low end, but half as effective in the high end. And so we strategically put those in there because the last thing we wanted to do is make a room that was so dry that yeah. when she's singing, she doesn't Completely feel kills natural. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. And I mean, Although I, I'm convinced that she could pr- probably sing in a closet and sound amazing. She's, like she, she's amazing, yeah. She was warming up, actually. This is one of the first, like, you, had, you know, you said that you don't always hand deliver all your speakers. Like, I flew out there with, with Biz, and we 
installed all the panels ourselves. Like I, I, I don't typically do that. Um, You're not here, folks. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it was it was really fun to do, and and it was a, it was cool to hang out. But she was had a show that night in L.A., and she was rehearsing while I was doing some of the install. And I don't think she misses any notes. Like, she's so good. Um, but yeah, with this space, with the perforated panels, and then on the sidewall, she has the Flex 48, so you can kind of see a little bit better in this picture. Um, this picture here, uh, you know, when the acoustic guitar comes out, she can have the shields in. It's more open and airy. And then um, when when she's doing vocals, she can take the shields out, and it can be a little bit more controlled environment. Yeah. Um, but overall, it's like, you know, there, there are some consultants out there that, like, when there's this many challenges, I mean, there's a sliding glass door there. There's all, all sorts of things. Sometimes they'll throw up their hands and be like, well, I can't work like this. You know, for me, it's just yeah. like, you, you know a studio is going in here, so just make the best of it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and you know, that always comes back to, like, you, you, want, you want the best environment. You want the best tools in order to make your best art, right? And, mm -hmm. But, like, there's still huge records, like... I always go back to the Bonavir record, the, like the first one. Yeah, it's recorded in like a cabin with a couple of like SM58s, mm -hmm. some headphones, and like a Boss multi-track recorder or something ridiculous, you know. And it yeah. sold six million copies yeah. Or, yeah. or something, you know. And it's like, okay, well, yeah. It's it, the thing is, is um, you know, the the room's important, but also I, I still I do what I do for a living, but I still tell people all the time I'd rather listen to an amazing song on a horrible sound system than a horrible song on an amazing sound system. Hundred percent. Like that's just the thing. It's like 100%. it still stays with the song. And I mean, our goal with these rooms that we're creating is to make it sound as good as possible. Um, but if you don't have the song to start with, it's 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 hard to improve upon that. Yeah, I mean, I, we I've been in so many situations where I've talked to a customer and they're they're having issues or you know they're not happy with the performance of speaker and it's like okay tell me about your environment tell me what's going on and it's like they send me photos and it's like speakers in essentially a ca like a cave a, <laughs> yeah. like like a cavernous room or you know sometimes just a plain jane white room but yeah. sometimes literally a basement with nothing but concrete walls and it's like no speaker in the world right. is going to solve this this for yeah. you there's yeah. there's no you're better off working on headphones yeah you know and in a lot of those cases it's like somebody's like oh i've got eight thousand dollars to spend it's like hey why don't you throw a huge chunk of that budget into acoustic treatment right and then get a lesser expensive set of speakers but a lot of folks don't want to do it because it's not as like it's, it's not, not as sexy it's, or, not, yeah. it's not as appealing and it's like man if, if your goal is to tr to have things translate which sure. is everybody's mm -hmm. goal you have to yeah there's no there's no quick easy fix there's no like magic bullet it is which it, what it is you have to do it yeah so. yeah that's i mean we we and, and that's part, part of the reason, too. Like, you want these spaces to be creative, but also uh, we're trying to have people go into, to our website and look at these rooms that we've done and be inspired to be like, acoustic treatment can actually yeah. be a benefit for other reasons just sonically. It can be mm -hmm. uh, the mood or the, the vibe that they have in the studio and try to make it a little bit more enticing for people to do. Yeah. The Josh Dunn room's insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one is. You should be super proud of that. that awesome. Thank you. Yeah, that, that one's really cool. We have a video on that. We'll, we'll link it in yeah. the description. But it's uh, I love it, too, when, when clients let us or they're creative themselves and they let us be real real free creative. with the design and they're open for you know taking taking risks as mm -hmm. far as i mean because that that room has complete uh wall of a, it's basically a mural printed on fabric that with the acoustical treatment behind it and like some people don't take that risk sometimes they just yeah. play it a little more safe but i get it my wife would not let me put a big mural in the yeah. living room. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. you know. Visual expectation yeah, is, I mean, is a problem, you know. yeah. But could, boxing mean, rings also aren't in my basement. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, that's true. So He's got like, a lot of things that aren't aren't in there. No, but, but I mean, it's 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 super cool. It's, it's definitely inspiring. Thank for you. For sure. Thank you. All right, next one. We worked heavily on this one together. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the, all three of us did. Yeah. Um, yeah. The uh, uh, Studio DMI in Las Vegas, which uh, I used to, I finished high school in Las Vegas. I used to live there, and, and so it was cool when this came around to, to be able to go back uh, there and, and work on this space. But they were converting their uh, Studio D into uh, Dolby Atmos space. And uh, I think it was the first one in Vegas that yeah, it was yeah that that was converted and and so we had been there in 2019 I believe and done some testing and we were going to upgrade all the rooms and then COVID happened and um, at the time we had only upgraded uh, Studio M which you've had experience listening is that, to Studio that's, M. Is that the small one that's the small one listen everybody 
like I'm looking right in the camera on this one. This Close to the mic. This room. I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense. But it is insane. If you're in Las Vegas, you need to go to City DMI and you need to walk into this little room. It's not very big. How big is it? I mean, it's it's not very wide. I mean, I'd say it's probably like 12 feet wide or something like that. 12 feet wide, 16 feet long or something yeah, like something that? Yeah, something like that. And it will break your brain. <laughs> it will break it. I, I think it's literally like the, the, the biggest monitoring experience I've ever had in a smaller space. Yeah. I, it makes no sense. Yeah, I remember you called me while you were there, and you're just like, "What is happening here? Like, what is?" <laughs> I still don't understand. It. I've been in it a dozen times, and I still don't understand. Yeah, it. it's it's yeah. it's amazing. And I mean, we did. There's a lot of things that are going on behind the scenes in Studio M, where like the front wall just looks like a flat wall that has the. Um, what is the Vicoustic the, product? The, the uh, flat panel VMT. Yeah, the VMT, yeah. And it's got that on there with kind of like the stone look. Yeah, uh, the and, concrete, and, yeah. But behind it is like 18 inches of base trapping. Like mm -hmm. there, we were able to do a lot there because there's like actually a little L-shaped section of yeah, that front wall that we just took the rest of it. And, and, and then we did soffit base trapping between the wall ceiling junctures everywhere, um, added thickness to the to the walls uh, behind the Vicoustic product. And... Uh, and then too, like just having that that set up there with the focals and then the small mastering desk. It's, yeah. my, it actually was the first studio that my my dad and my brother got to to listen to that we've done. Like, oh, really? yeah, yeah, we, we were cool. out we were out in Vegas um, going to a, a basketball game and and we were just on vacation together and uh, we stopped by and and hung out with them, went to dinner with them as well. Like, which by the way, Studio DMI people are the nicest ever, the nicest people ever. Yeah, they're, they're just like every time I'm in town. It's it's like their family, which is yeah. great. Tommy, Luca, Rob. Yeah. Everybody shout out. And Tori. Tori, she, yeah, she's Tori, great. she's awesome. She's, yeah. If if I if I, if she ever needs a job. Tori. <laughs> hey, no, you have to fight me for uh, I, she she would have to come I, here. I think I, first. Depending on the game, as long as it's not ping pong. We're yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, yeah, so my dad and my brother got to listen in there. Um, my brother chose to listen to a Beach Boys track. Um, and my dad, of course, like you got if you're in a high quality listening environment, you have to listen to Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> what, what album? Uh, I, I think he did the Fins to the Left, Fins to the Right. I don't song. even know any I, Jimmy Buffett albums. I don't know. <laughs> he has them all. Uh, yeah. He has them all. He loves them. But yeah, it was cool for them to just experience. But yeah, Studio yeah. M that got completed um, bef like kind of before COVID, and then. Um, then when this this came about, like we already had the acoustical measurements of the space, like because we yeah. did it in 2019. But then it was kind of, you know, revamping the room for Atmos, which there's so many things to consider for Atmos rooms. You know this. I mean, yeah. you're, you're well yeah. entrenched in that right mm -hmm. now, uh, like we are. But it's like in an existing room where normally we're running conduit behind the walls and, and, you know, making it as seamless as possible. So you don't have wires going everywhere. Like in this room, like all the drywall and everything was finished. And mm -hmm. so we needed to um, actually hide it behind the acoustical treatment. So some of the things that we, we furred out and, and made base trapping and, and uh, we were able to put the conduit there, but it just turned out great. And that was also the first experience that my, my dad and my brother had listening to Atmos mm -hmm. at all. And uh, you know, the, yeah. The classic. Uh, that was my first too. Yeah, it was yeah, your first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you think of it? Oh, it was crazy, was especially because I I got to play the Marvin Gaye track, "What's Going On," which is a track that I just like very much. Previously, I, I like I, I like very much some of the Marvin Gaye uh, albums, and I know the track so well in terms of like the back vocals and the strings coming along and all those elements, and then experiencing that in like a three D experience it, it was crazy and and fortunately i got to test it because because that's a that's a funny thing so the um, i moved to to montreal to work for focal for about a year and a half ago and this was my first trip here for the company i've i've come to work to the u.s before to help focal here at trade shows and etc but this was my first trip to the company uh for the company working for them and I got to experience for the first yeah, time good first the trip. Dolby yeah. Atmos system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It actually was uh, Oscar yeah. who works with, with for me. Uh, uh, it was his first business trip was to go to Studio DMI and do that first first testing. Yeah. So yeah, it, it was it was incredible. It was like I, I don't want to say I, I didn't drop a tear, <laughs> but it's <laughs> some people but do. You know, I've it's, seen uh, it. yeah, I've seen it it's, a lot. it's also like the context of, of that music, the message in that music. It's already so so strong, and then 
feeling like mm-hmm. overwhelmed by all that is like it was a su- it was a super great experience. And also that that space just in general in terms of its like feel, it's very like it, it's like you could take a nap in there. It's not like yeah. dark like a theater, but it's like yeah. the the ambience about it's really nice and it's it's isolated really well. Not, has to be not a lot of abs- not like excessive absorption that would make you feel like in a very dead environment. It, I don't know. That room's pretty dead, though. <laughs> it is, but we did work in some of the the multi fusers yeah. in there to to make sure yeah, that yeah. It, it was yeah. it was balanced well. Um, and and it's something. I mean, they're doing. I mean, really high quality work out of there. I mean, with the yeah. new like Daft Punk. The Daft um, Punk came out of there. Yeah, uh, and, which Mick Gazowski did. And I think Rob assisted on that. Yeah, and then uh, the new Skrillex record came out of there, mm-hmm. which is. Tons of fun in that and Atmos as well. Yeah, yeah, they're doing lots of cool stuff. Yeah. Rob, Rob's even doing some like some smaller indie artists that like are some of the best Atmos mixes I've heard. Yeah, you know, and and they're just like you know, he's just doing lots of fun, really cool, inventive ways, and and I think that's how. That. Well, and I th- I think that's the beautiful part about yeah. like the format, right? Is it's like everybody's learning to do this thing a different way. Yeah, and there's no real, which is also kind of scary, right? Like, right. Ev- there's there's lots of opinions about things, and I won't even get into that. But like, you know, it took people forever to figure out. They're like, oh well, the drums don't go in the left speaker, and the and the vocals <laughs> or the guitars yeah. don't go in the right speaker because that's how the first you know, Beatles albums were in stereo. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's like a lot oh. of jazz records still have that too. Like you're yeah. hearing like completely. Yeah. <laughs> if you took one, 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 you one don't of, hear it anymore. One yeah. your piece out, piece out is just like. Uh, yeah, so it's like ah, the vocals are in the back. It's like, I mean, it's like you know, and and obviously there's reasons and people are figuring it out, but mm-hmm. it's really cool to see to see Rob like. Yeah, he's. Gro- he, you can see he's like grown as an engineer. Kind as he of said in our stuff. in our YouTube video, he said that I murdered Studio M. He murders mixes all he does. the time. I mean, he's he does a great he does. job with it. He's everything. just a hustler too. He's just like he just gets it done. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Now, so that, that room's great. Um, you know, next is to try to um, get Luca to leave his room long enough for us to upgrade that one because that, mm-hmm. that we have D and M are both uh, both fully fully uh, treated. Close the deal, Gavin. I know. I need to do it. I'll call. I'll call Luca about it. But yeah, that's a great space. The uh, um, next one here, this is Brett Ensley Studios yeah. in uh, South Carolina. It's yeah. in like Greenville area. And this was like a, a bedroom studio. that, or it, it was just off his kitchen. Again, this was no isolation needed. We then did a three-car garage live room uh, right across his driveway. And uh, um, yeah, it's just so great. He does uh, composition. And, um, and they're just networked together? Yep. You got cool. co- we have conduit underneath the driveway that just we ran over there. And- yeah, cool. It's really, really, really nice. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, he loves his focals. What's your What's your take on the uh, the 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 library, the bookshelf, the bookshelf on diffuse, the back. diffuser in the in the back? I think Reed Chippen in, in Nashville's mm-hmm. got it set up, and it looks a it looks awesome. But yeah. B, I think it's pretty practical, right? Yeah, it is. Well, for him, since he's a composer, he had a ton of uh, music books and and binders and different things, and he's like. It's got to go in this room somewhere, yeah. and it's kind of the most natural spot Figure to put it. it. Out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I always tell people like, as long as you read like thick books and thin yeah. books, you're you're good. You can't yeah. just have all the same thing. So, so, we're, so we're, 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 we're no. <laughs> were you there adjusting all the positions of the books and yeah. say, oh no no, this one has to yeah, go whose in job the top was that? shelf. Whose job? Whose job was that? Was that Ryan's job? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he calculating the sequence in which you're gonna. Orient the books. So we do renderings of it. Make yeah. sure that Ryan, the sequence is all wrong. <laughs> Ryan's just sitting there, just throw all the books one down. The time, do it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really great uh, space. Really comfortable again. Um, before it was like a mustard colored walls, and we actually just uh, I think two podcasts ago was uh, Brett was on. So we, if people want to listen to that, they can see more behind the scenes of that. Um, this next one. This is that case where the kid's bedroom was directly above it and and that's why the room is so small because this is the only space that we had in the basement and we had to do a full like room within a room it's a broken soul um uh audio in in maryland and john spicer is the owner of that and i mean you can see that i mean that's a that's an argosy desk and it the room's not much wider than it it's about Mm -hmm. uh, you know nine to ten feet wide um but for what he's doing which is mixing and mastering it worked out really nicely he's got you know, custom four inch panels. Uh, the Flex 48s that I put in here, this was kind of fun because uh, those are all located at um, uh, uh, pressure points of where the tangential modes uh, in the room were, were going to be building up. And the modes were right in that 80 to 100 hertz range where that Flex 48 works the best. And so we put those strategically in those spots to where 
he really never takes the shields out. Like mm-hmm. it, it's not one of those things where he's trying to make it adaptive, yeah. but it's just more to control some room modes. Um, got ceiling clouds in there, and so, so it's a nice hybrid between custom elements that were built and then some things that were just shipped and he hangs on the walls. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he really loves his, his focals in there. Um, next one's Matt Sutherland's uh, studio. He works for Sweetwater, um, and he has this in his basement. And uh, Pretty awesome basement. Yeah, 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 it is a good basement. And this one, isolation is crazy. I mean, you, if you're upstairs, because he has two two small kids, and he didn't want to disturb them if he came down here. And, and uh, I mean, you have to put your ear to the ground to hear yeah. anything when he's playing yeah. 95 you know, dB yeah. down, down below. That's a challenge, too, with expectations of customers in terms of sound isolation as well, it, right? It is. Not, not only just the misconception, which, by the way, Gavin has a, an, an interesting episode where they kind of explain the differences between acoustic treatment and, and sound isolation, but... With, I mean, sometimes I would get requests dealing with some customers where it's just like, hey, that's that that's not possible. It's like, oh, you know, I I, I have this room, <laughs> and I, I want to be able to make noise at like three a.m. Yeah. just working on music. I'm and, a drummer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, dude, I I remember still back in Portugal visiting these guys that wanted to build a studio in a in a the basement slash store of a, of a, of an apartment building. And I went there and I said, I'm, I'm sorry guys, you, what you can do, what, what you want to do is not, yeah. <laughs> does not match Just what you, build a what room you in can that room do. Is about all you can yeah. do. Well, well, but you, even, even then, that. like, you know, if, if you're in a basement, like you're already limited mm-hmm. by the height. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now these guys, because above the apartment yeah. start. So, you know, <laughs> you can yeah. you can you can do a false ceiling, but <laughs> you know it's it's, it's only it so would much. Go, yeah, it I would mean, get and, crazy. And that is the struggle. Is it's it's all about expectations when it comes to sound isolation, yeah. because and and that's one of the reasons we created this tool on our website called a sound isolation simulator, mm-hmm. where you can it, everybody's uh, level of ex- expectation for how much sound is going to get blocked is different. And yeah. you, you're not inside their head. Like you, yeah. you don't really know what they, because what's okay for one person is unacceptable for the next. Yeah. And like, yeah. where does this person They stand? don't know the difference between sure. 60 or 70 SDCs, DBs, yeah. STC. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so this the simulator that we have, it, it allows you to like the first sound sample, you click on it. You turn it up as loud as it'll safely go, make it yeah. sound like you're in the room with a live band. And then we have all mm-hmm. these wall types, partition types that you can click on that. Yeah, I've your... seen it. I've tested it in the website. Yeah, it's cool. It's fun. It's yeah. and it, it's kind of like the starting point. When there is an yeah. isolation issue, we just say, hey, go to this website. Tell us which yeah. wall is the start of acceptable, you know, and yeah. then we'll design from there. And which so. is also tricky when, when we're talking about, for example, bedrooms, because you will be much more... Uh, sensitive when yeah. you're trying to get some sleep. Sure, which is which is a big problem. If you know the the same level of noise will not annoy you the same way, mm-hmm. you know, in the middle of the day. If we're here talking, or mm-hmm. if you're trying to get some sleep and everything is quiet in the room, so, it, for sure. So well, and, and on top of that, it's like when a lot of times when we go in to do these isolation measurements um, by the book, what you do is load up the room with pink noise, mm-hmm. but then. In real world, sometimes it's a rhythmic thing. <laughs> you, you can pick up on a lot more. Yeah. So yeah, that's a, there's a lot. But uh, yeah, this space. I mean, he he can play all hours of night, and not have a problem. Um, he's got the focals in there. We, this is actually the first video that we did on the channel is the mm-hmm. Matt Sutherland video, and uh, you can check that out. But it's his also his furniture is awesome. Like, have you seen? Uh, I don't know if you saw the video, but his desk, he's got the full keyboard there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you normally you pull the keyboard tray out and things get real wobbly in mm-hmm. any desk. He designed it to where you can pull the keyboard tray out, but then the top of the desk just goes back. So he can leave, ah, it, leave it right where it is. What's even better about that is that you can stay in the sweet spot while you're playing. Yeah, like if totally. you That's lean back, yeah. So that whole top yeah. tabletop uh, just slides back and you can play the keyboard. So just out of curiosity to reach that level of isolation... Like briefly and without revealing any specific oh, yeah. secrets. No. What what did you do? Like so, uh, there's some information layers of- in that video. We kind of show some mm-hmm. of the of the uh, uh, construction that was done. But we we did. It's kind of like a, a room within a room. But we did a actually. A, have you heard like the inverse ceiling or the reverse ceiling type of thing where it's like 
Um, there's framing for it, and then you have all your mass, but then it goes up into a cavity, so you maximize your ceiling height. So, okay. uh, so we ended up. It's almost like the drywall layers are on top of the joists. They're Ooh, not on top, okay. but they're in between. They're friction fit in between, and it's like this kind of honey, like honeycomb lattice okay. thing that's built. And then that also gave us all the depth of the joists to use for for treatment. So this is all fabric there uh, here. Um, so it allowed us to maximize okay. ceiling height while still getting a room within a room. So effect. instead of having like the joists and then the isolation, you yeah. do the isolation, the joists, yes. and now you can have. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Well, yeah, whatever. These guys whatever. are so pumped right now. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. so exciting. We're, we're not talking about Focal at all right now. No, that's okay. <laughs> I actually have another question about this. Sorry to keep yeah. lingering on, on this room. But like uh, one th- huge thing I run into when, when I'm talking with clients about speaker setup is symmetry mm-hmm. in a room. Right. This right? one has none of that. And symmetry yeah. is super, super important. Mm-hmm. Um, what what things did you do? would you do here to mitigate the symmetry yeah, it, it's another one of these is where we're talking with with Matt about his goals, and he used to have a studio in California that he had to drive like 30, 35 minutes to, and and you know, or longer in traffic depending on the night, and, and then come home late at night, and he's like, I just want a, a retreat in the basement that I can just go down at any time and and have fun, and um, the basement was oddly shaped with this, I mean, this angled wall here on the back. All right on the other side of that is the stairs that go up, but mm-hmm. the stairs don't, they don't hug a wall of the basement. They just go right down the center of it. So uh, there wasn't even a, there was one symmetrical area of his, of his uh, basement we could have put the studio, but it would have ended up being more like that broken soul studio, really, really narrow small volume, and, and yeah. small. And he, for what he wanted, being able to just hang out and be very comfortable, this was the, the best space. But it's nowhere near symmetrical. You know, there's a, and, and there's things that we did with the treatment to try to uh, balance it out as best we can. But any room that's not, symmetrical, you know, if you take uh, acoustical measurements of the left speaker versus the right speaker, it almost looks like two different rooms, yeah. you know, and you try to do as much as you can with treatment to, to combat that, but um, you're limited by mm. geometry, you know. Um, but in this space, I mean, his his monitoring system sounds great and it tested out really well, um, but uh, there's a lot that went into it, of course, like with, and he built all the treatments himself, like he built oh, the wow. diffusers, um, the soffits, the cloud, like he, he built that cloud by himself and hung it, like, um, it's it was a a big effort on his part, but um, yeah, if we can get symmetry, we always strive for that. Yeah. And 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 in this case, it's just it, if it happened, it would have shrunk the room probably by sixty percent of, uh, of what okay. it, what the size would have been. Quite a lot, yeah. Yep. Uh, let's see. We got some more here. We got um, um, uh, Matthew Fisher in in uh, Grand Rapids area. He's got he's a composer. He does a lot of like film and TV, um, and he's just got this really uh, comfortable space. and And he's got the uh, the Focal. Um, was the old CMSs, yeah, yeah, CMSs, and he he's had those for years. Like I actually met him at Sweetwater at a Gear Fest once, and I just gave him a lot of like free advice because he you know he wasn't going to hire us at the time, and he he didn't have the budget to do so, and he's like but he always told me like if i ever build a room like i'm going to i'm going to get to the point where i can i can hire you guys so we did this for him and um, yeah he spends most of his days in there you know composing things for films which is pretty awesome very cool um, next one's brooklyn duo studio out in uh, washington state and uh, that's another one where the white speakers would look they, like really they would look really good in there they're really awesome uh, husband yeah. wife duo um, they're uh, classically trained. Like one went to uh, Eastman and one went to Juilliard, um, and they play piano and cello. And they take modern songs and they um, um, they're, know, they're incredible. They're just yeah. unbelievable. But they have this studio, and we wanted to have like a nice studio on um, the uh, the one side of the room and then the back of the room. They wanted to look more like a living room because they they uh, do. Uh, their vi- YouTube channel from here, like they they film videos, and so it's a really big open space. But we can also with the LED lighting, we can make the front look like a you know a awesome. modern oh, studio, yeah. and and uh, yeah, they just love it there. It's it's really comfortable for them and spacey, and mm-hmm. yeah, I, I've seen the video is is pretty impressive. Have you seen a big uptick in, in white rooms? Yes, lately? it was Crowder's that did it. Um, <laughs> thanks, Biz it's all his fault. And, and Crowder yeah. for that. Fault. 
but yeah, as soon, as soon as Crowders came out, and a lot of people saw that on our website, yeah. and people, like the Brooklyn Duo one in particular, actually, if you see the ceiling cloud, that was directly inspired from Crowder, mm-hmm. and uh, um, and they wanted it all to be white. And then um, we're doing probably three three or four more right now that haven't been yeah. built yet that are all white. My yeah. old house is like is kind of like this this vibe, mm-hmm. right? And it's like it's kind of got the Scandinavian thing going on. Yeah. But I think the people that the thing that people don't think about is like for, if you're shooting in, any kind of video content or anything in there, the room is so malleable in terms of like what you can do that yeah. it's really a no it's really a no-brainer mm-hmm. and it just looks awesome. Yeah. It's, it's kind of timeless. It's not like Right. It's not super yeah. dated. Yeah. You know? I don't know there will be a time where it looks dated. Yeah. I Maybe agree. I'm wrong. I don't know. You never know. Well, when it does, you just kick on the LED lights and then... Yeah. Boom! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next one here is for Jeffrey J in uh, Sicily, Italy. Um, uh, Jeffrey is the lead singer of Eiffel 65. It had the big hit called Blue. Um, it's always fun on, on this because when we did the renderings of the space, uh, Oscar uh, asked me, he's like, well, what color should I make the panels? I'm like, I just looked uh-huh. at him. I was like, it's blue. You have to, you have to make him blue. So he made him blue, and Jeffrey loved him. Uh, and this is a, you know, all Vicoustic product this in is, his space. This and, is awesome. Yeah, and he works a lot with Studio DMI as yeah. well. And uh, I remember, uh, I remember. He he still had some talks with us, and and then and then he went on with this project, which mm-hmm. just turned it's out awesome. really great. Yeah, yeah, and the, yeah. The the white again. It's especially in on the pro audio side. Uh, it was always like a lot of people go for that, like full. In, in this case, not 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 so much, but but yeah, like back in the days, a lot of people would come to us and say, "Oh yeah, you, you see that DJ type of the clean studio, look, yeah. everything white." They they would totally go for it. Yeah. I think Steve Aoki had Steve Aoki a room had for a long time that was yeah. like that. That was all white yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, but it's cool. Looks yeah. great. Uh, next one is Butler University. We actually just filmed um, on Monday. Uh, we filmed a um, YouTube video that we're going to be putting out to get about their whole studio the setup. Bulldogs. What's that? The Bulldogs, right? The Bulldogs. That's right. Yeah. And and uh, they have this is one of their rooms. There's like uh, six or seven rooms in the in the tour that we do. But um, they have the, the large monitors from Ocean Way. But then they also have the, these Focal. I think they're the Shape Fifties um, yeah. that were there. And they just couldn't say enough good things about them. They just love the Focals and the Shape Fifties of all the yeah. shapes. They're my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. And it's I just can... like it's just like it's everything you need right there. Not down low end, but get the job done. I mm-hmm. have the sixty fives in. I'm I'm happy with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not not just because I'm wearing the shirt, <laughs> yeah. with the logo, but uh, yeah. but yeah, I I always dig the the design on the speakers. Yeah, yeah. shapes sound great. Um, we got um, Freak Zone mm-hmm. down in in uh, uh, Florida, and we've got uh, the Focals in there as well. A really nice, comfortable space. Uh, we've also got the um, Fox River Studios up in Green Bay uh, area in Wisconsin. Um, he's got uh, the Focals in his, his control room, and then we've also got the, the live room next to it. Uh, it's really comfortable and nice space to be in. Uh, also, we're going to be filming one at uh, 416 Wabash here in Indianapolis. It's uh, one of the more local projects for us, and, and they have uh, Focals in their room. they got a control room and a, and a live room, and even... It looks out onto a stage where uh, they have live live uh, um, performances that can be recorded in the mm-hmm. studio, which is re- really great. Um, and then the other project we're working on together right now is uh, for our buddy Colt Capper. Oh, yeah. So yeah, we're, yeah. We're, uh, you're heavily involved with that as well. Yeah, I've known Colt for a really long time. I think even pre- maybe pre pre his YouTube thing. Hmm. Um, I, he was like maybe one of the first guys I met when I was in Nashville. Nice. Um, and we just kind of like... Typical Nashville thing. Hey, you want to grab coffee? Even though I don't drink coffee, um, <laughs> I don't either. Yeah, you've never. But never that's drink. the line. If if you say, hey, do you want to go grab a like uh, a beer or something? You're probably going to get more nose from beers than you do coffee. See, I don't drink beer either. So well, I don't drink. <laughs> I drink coffee though. <laughs> You're now reconsidering being on this podcast. No, not at right all. now. I mean, maybe a little <laughs> bit. No, no, of course never. No, but Colt's a really great guy, um, and uh, he obviously has a really compelling YouTube channel. And, and I feel like his YouTube channel discredits his abilities as an engineer because he's super talented. Like, yeah, he he is like a bootstrapped, like been working in a studio forever, yeah. blue collar like mm-hmm. kind of guy. And you know, I think he's really relatable and and that's why he's done so well on YouTube. It's just like he's yeah. he, he's a common sense kind of get it done guy and, mm-hmm. and people love it. Yeah. And uh, his rooms 
honest, honestly, this, his room's like really not in a pretty great shape ab- above like 200, but yeah. it's got some low end issues. Yeah. Too. And that was his thing when yeah. uh, you, you introduced me to, to Colton and uh, you're like, well, if you're already te- tearing this thing apart to, to make it uh, Atmos ready, yeah. then might as well uh, increase uh, the, the, yeah, acoustical, the acoustics, ba- right, you know, yeah. bass trapping and things like that. So it, there's things that we're, we're doing as far as um, some soffit bass trapping, some vertical bass trapping, um, uh, furring out the back wall about a foot and adding some diffusers as well. And um, so it'll, it'll be a much, much nicer yeah. space when it's finished. And he's like, man, if I, I have one shot to do this. If I tear it all down to do Atmos and I don't do the acoustical upgrades now, I will never do yeah. them. Yeah. You know, it's just so. going to be a hassle in the future. He's do it all himself like yeah. you know he's, he's like got his I actually went over and, and measured that room with nothing in it he wanted me to come over and measure it so yeah um, and we did that and he's like he's got his nail gun set now he's like getting ready to go yeah. you know so yeah. he also did it the, the way it is he built well, it he built that all out himself before yeah. he did it all himself yeah, yeah. yeah. correct yeah yeah well, he actually has a walkthrough of the whole thing right in the mm-hmm. video. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah that, that video is really cool because it shows yeah, the, all yeah, the yeah. construction yeah. and everything that went through. He's a ripping guitar player, too. I didn't know that. Like, he's he's one of the guys. He's, like, one of the dudes. That, the reason I don't walk in the guitar store and don't play. <laughs> right. He's, he's, he's Colt's around the corner. He's right that guy, but you never, you never suspect it. Like, I look at him like, ah, oh, you're a drummer or something. Yeah. You know, and it's like, no, he's a guitar player. That's awesome. Yeah. And then we're, the last one is like our, our best collaboration ever, I think, is my office. <laughs> my favorite, uh, this for is, sure. This is my office here at Haversick Designs, and I've got the, the Shape 65s there hooked up to my Grandma Vox floating record player, the vertical nice. record player there. So it's, Orange Telecaster set it off, you know? Yeah, the GNL ASAT Classic there. I'm oh, sorry. No, that's not okay. Telecaster, it's an I mean, ASAT. it basically is. Leo would disagree. I know, that's true. That's yeah. true. Um, but yeah, it's, it, I, I, you know... I appreciate you guys coming on the podcast and yeah. like I've always uh, enjoyed working with you guys and I mean there's a lot more to come. I know that we have at least six or seven studios going on right now that have Focal uh, planned for it and and uh, yeah, I I always I mean there's a lot of great speakers out there but it's it's nice to know when people pick something like Focal that um, you know my job gets a little easier. You know, I know you guys probably think the Thank same you. way about if someone's going to treat their room, that makes Might your speaker well sound Kevin. better. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, yeah, of course. You know, it's a pleasure having you guys here. And also, it's not only the first time that anyone's visited us for this, it's also the first time we've ever had three people on a podcast. Well, Party. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thanks for having us. It's, it's fun. And uh, likewise, no back at you. It's like, I, I think when, when you're doing any product, especially at the scale, like, and, you know, it's it's expensive whether it's speakers or the gear or the room, whatever, it's, it's all expensive. So we're going with people who are like, okay, we get stuff done. We want to do cool stuff like that. To me, it's like, put it on my gravestone, do cool things. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, oh, if that's your job and you work with people who are, you know, get their job done, do great stuff, build awesome rooms, mm-hmm. make great speakers, you know, it's just a, it's, it's a great existence and, and hopefully a great experience for the customer because oh, yeah. that's also yeah. part of it. It's like, yeah, how can we make set expectations properly go over and above and beyond a little bit like you know he's got this little in this photo you can see he's got this little floor mat but you know we came in <laughs> and, and Gavin had a Focal floor mat made for us yeah and it's just like little touch I hate to say it but it's like little touches like that that can make the difference in an experience sometimes that's the thing I mean we've been you know? friends for so long and when you guys were going to be coming here uh, we, we had an intern this summer Nate Pitts who has a um, uh, we'll, we'll link his his Instagram channel in the description but he has his own business of making custom rugs you know and it just was a thing this summer where I just started making rugs for customers of mine that have like a cool studio logo so as soon as you guys booked like coming in for this, I, I had him do a focal a focal rug. You That's know, awesome. like because everyone right. needs a focal looks rug. Out, looks do. awesome. Every, yeah. Everybody needs one. <laughs> we uh, we'll see if we can work something out with <laughs> with Nate to uh, you know buy enough speakers, buy an Amos rig, get a free rug. There we go. <laughs> you know? There we go. <laughs> you know, it's like a little that. promotion deal. I love it. But, yeah. Well, thanks again, guys. I appreciate you coming and yeah. and uh, um, look forward to to working with you in the future. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Uh, Well, this has been another episode of The Sound Project. Thanks for being a part of it. If you have any uh, other ideas for future podcasts you'd like us to record, you can email us at info at haversickdesigns.com, and we'll see you next week.